Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today I thought I would make a part two to how to add on the 3D texture for dungeon tiles. Um, Cause I got a couple questions on it and I thought it'd be cool just to clarify some things about adding it to the actual tiles themselves. As long as that you've watched the other two videos on how to create the tiles themselves and then applying the actual 3D textures. Cause I'm not gonna go over how to do most of that. I'm just gonna assume that you've seen those. So of course I'll link those at at the end of the video just in case but today it's just about adding them to the actual tiles themselves so i'm gonna go ahead and jump right in as you can see i already have some examples up here and i will go over how to apply them as well so basically as long as you have your normal dungeon tile so i'll be working with the two by twos um you'll see that if you just go ahead and apply it so say you have your plain one here you copy it and just do the modifiers it's not going to work out properly so I was hoping that it would but it's pretty funky looking I mean obviously if you turn down the strength or you switch the orders of these I mean if you switch the order it's still not going to be right um so unfortunately you can't just add the uh modifiers like I was hoping but it was worth a shot so I thought I'd show you guys what would happen if you just applied them as is now if you want to you can get it looking like this um, but it's a bit more of a process so I mean you can get your one by or just one square and then basically copy it and boolean them together to be however you need it to be but you'll kind of see that it just limited it to the one grout line so if you do one tile it's not going to be as decorative um, of course what you could do is like before just add one big plane to be whatever size you wanted and then divvy it up so let's say you did mesh plane and then you wanted it to be two inches oh that's the radius so we would do one inch so that way it would be our normal like two by two square you could certainly do tab w subdivide 20 just like before and then add your modifiers so subdivision surface crank that up to maybe three or four displace modifier i already have my texture in here so i'm just going to select that um so this will work just fine i mean obviously <laughs> i have to fix the strength a little bit so what did i do for this like 0.3 or something no 0.05 yeah, that'll work for today's demonstration at least. What you can do is apply, apply, and then tab into it. Now this way is probably gonna be a little bit more difficult to do because then you kind of have to figure out where you want all of your lines to be. And since it's so dense of a mesh, it probably be a little bit more difficult. So I personally probably wouldn't do it this way of course you would get more brick detail and obviously you could have bigger sizes and everything so this way might work out for you if um, you're pretty confident in being able to select everything pretty well so let's say there's our grid but then it's still a little bit off because they're not completely straight and I don't know I wouldn't really recommend this way <laughs> all right so let's just tab out of this and I'm just gonna pull that over there the way that I would recommend doing it is grabbing whatever size tile you're working with. So for me, I'm gonna use the two by two. I'm gonna duplicate it and draw it down here. And I'm just gonna kind of line it up with my grid, which you'll see why in a moment, which I could put on my snapping if I wanted to, but whatever, too late. Okay, what we can do is, of course, if you wanted to do the one square, you could delete everything except for one square. But what I'm going to do is actually work with all four squares. So I'm going to go to front view, deselect anything, and go into wireframe view with Z and border select everything except for the top planes and delete all the rest. All right, so now we're just left with our four squares. Select everything, W, subdivide, 
20, just like normal, tab out, subdivision surface, and displace. Crank that up, and switch this to brick. Um, oops. I'll just do 0.3 for now, looks decent enough. I mean, obviously, I didn't make a bump map or anything with Crazy Bump or any other program. Um, since today I'm just doing quick how to add everything together. So obviously my textures aren't looking the best as they could be, but like I said, this is just a demo. So, yep, um, you learned how to do the other textures in the last video. So, okay, moving on, just going to go ahead and tab. Nope. I need to go ahead and apply my modifiers and then I can tab into edit mode. So you'll notice that again, it is very, very dense of a mesh. So pretty crazy there. So there should be two ways of doing this. Um, if you can do it the first way, cool. But the second way has been working out better for me. Basically, you should be able to just grab the outer edge of each one, extrude it, size it so it's, you know, flat and then be able to connect them all together. For me, that was going to be way too time consuming. So what I was going to do was select everything in one square. So you can just right click on a vertice, hit L for linked, and it'll grab everything that's connected and then separate them out and build them out like I would the one uh, tile. So what you could do is hit L for linked, P to separate by selection, and you'll notice that it goes away. So I'm going to do that again. And one more time for this one. So I'm just left with this square. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So what I can do now is grab these edges. I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude. Go into front view. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit, size it out a little bit. And I'm going to hit, actually, I'm going to zoom in SZ0 to get it completely flat so we get that nice seam again. Now, the other thing is, since we did the subdivision surface modifier, it rounded our edges. And I don't want round edges. Um, so that way, you know, it keeps the tiles modular and I can actually connect these pieces together via Boolean and all that fun stuff. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I can just grab all these vertices. I'm going to do this rounded corner here. Do Alt M at center to just make it one vertice. Now, of course, you could size everything if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do this quick fix. May not be the prettiest, but since this is going to be pretty small detail anyway, once we print it out, I don't think it'll really matter. But of course, if you wanted to, you could just go to your other corner and instead figure out where your actual corner is. So right there, select these. Size it along the Y axis, zero, and then pull it back down. And then same thing here where it starts to turn. Want to deselect those S X zero and then pull that back out. So this will probably be, you know, definitely be the cleaner topology way to do it. Um, probably better to do it this way, but I am just going to do the quick and dirty way. So Alt M center.
Okay. So just to make sure that everything is still straight, I'm just going to hit S, Z, zero again. Perfect. And make sure that it's lined up with over here, which needs to be pulled down a little bit. Perfect. E to extrude and pull that down to match as well, which what I'm going to do is pull this over and tap back into this. There we go. That's much easier. And pull this down. Let's make sure it stays the same, or at least about the same. Awesome. Okay. So there is our first square. Oh, except we also need to make sure that we face that off afterwards so it's solid. Okay. Cool. So that is how we can make that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other three really quick. So I'm just going to fast forward through that since, I mean, you guys don't need more instruction. Um, so I'm going to fast forward and I'll be right back. So now that you have everything built out, um, you can certainly make sure that everything intersects well so that way, you know, joins up properly, um, which this is misaligned a little bit. So what I want to do is just go ahead and line that up better and then we can always size it um, to be straight once it's bullied all together. So you want to make sure there's good overlap for when you do that. So let's bring that back down there. That's probably good. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and add modifier, Boolean, Union. Need three of those and then we can add them, apply. All right, and then hide the extra ones. Perfect, okay. So obviously you wanna go ahead and straighten up those lines. Like I said, I just did this really quick as a demonstration. Obviously you can make yours look much prettier. <laughs> and then you'll wanna make sure that um, your Boolean did apply properly, make sure there's nothing extra. Oh, which clearly I messed up since there's a blank face there. But um, anyway, so just be more careful than I was. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any other techniques for how you guys have found out how to apply them to your tiles, if there's a quicker way, I would love to know. Um, so leave that in the comments as well. Let me know if you have any requests. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.